if you're disciplined, mm-hmm. right? Discipline saying that I'm committed to something. Discipline meaning that I am willing to give up something I want so badly now for something I want most in the future. Mm -hmm. So yes, I want to go play now. Yes, I want to travel now. Yes, I want to eat the restaurants now. Yes, I want to go to the party now. But I'm willing to give up now for what I want most. That's discipline. And discipline is a form of self-love because what I'm saying is I love myself enough that I'm willing to give up this short term, this fleeting satisfaction for something I want so much. I want my family to be financially independent. I I don't want to worry about money again. I don't want my family to have to deal with some of the stuff that money causes as an issue. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I'm willing to give all this up now. And yes, I know it's going to be fun. And yes, I know people are going to talk about it. Yes, I know they're going to show it on social media. And yes, I am going to feel like I I, I feel missing out. Like, man, I would have been, I wanted to be there. Yes, but what I want most, I'm so disciplined with it. I love myself enough that I'm willing to give this up right now. Yeah, that's good. That's self-care. That's self-love. The promise we make to our future self. Mm -hmm. Listen, our future self is counting on the current self to keep up with the promise our past self made. This is key. Like, I don't know how my future self would be today if my current self continued to do what I want now over what I want most. If you're a go-getter, faith-driven and family-focused and need to break through to your next level, this is the podcast for you. Your self-talk can reshape every area of your life. It's time to dream and think big. Welcome to the Self-Talk Experience with Darnell and Tracy Self. It's time to elevate, baby. Let's get into the show. Welcome to the Self-Talk Experience. I am Tracy Self, and I'm here with my co-host and the love of my life, Darnell Self. Hey. This is Self-Talk Experience. Yes. The things we say to ourselves about ourselves eventually will determine what and even who we attract for ourselves. Absolutely. How are you doing today, babe? Everything is great. Listen, it's uh, my birthday week. It is. Sagittarius in the house. (laughs) Can you believe we started this podcast on your birthday two years ago? We did. That's crazy. I know. We launched on your birthday. We sure did. I forgot about that. We did. Yep, And we're still here, guys. Still still here here. talking good to ourselves. And hopefully you've been talking good to yourself. Talking even better to ourselves than from when we started. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so true. It's so true. And that's that's a wonderful thing I love about people, right? Like we can actually be better today than when we were yesterday Mm -hmm. if we're not careful If we're around people who remind us of who we used to be instead of celebrating the person who we currently are or becoming, Mm -hmm. we continue to unfortunately digress. We continue to think about, yeah, because, you know, back in the day and we start thinking about the person we used to be because we're reminded of that person by somebody else. Yes. But if you do the opposite and you continually work on yourself and try your best to put stuff in a box, you just keep moving forward. And I just, I know that I just feel so confident in saying that just by doing the podcast with you and all the episodes that we recorded, I just feel like I've gotten better and better and better. And you know, sometimes you do, you think about things that you shouldn't think about. That's that's human, sure, right? Sure. But if you're on that path, it's so much faster. Like I get over things so yeah. much faster yeah. than I did from the beginning of st- when we started this podcast. You ain't lying. Is that, that's not good grammar, is it? You ain't, you ain't lying, boy. You be getting over <laughs> stuff. Look, you be getting over stuff much faster. <laughs> No, stop. No, you 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 <laughs> have done an amazing job working on yourself and I believe you are proof of what it means to have self-reflection because you watch these episodes more often than I do. Yes, and it's like you if you watch them and you really internalize it, it's like why do I want to be that way? Yeah. What can I do to change? Yeah. And when you change that self-talk, it's amazing to yeah. me. And I just never really thought about it as much because I didn't have to because we weren't doing a podcast. Yeah, but you know what's funny? <laughs> when I watch you um, either listening to it in the car or you know, watching it on our TV mm-hmm. or on YouTube, you are actually taking notes like, oh, that's good. Even though you are part of it, sometimes you would have to see the movie twice before you actually right. pick up on something right. that you didn't hear or see the first time. Right. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. It happens when you take a course. And I've been a part of a a, a program where there's other students with me, Mm -hmm. a part of a course. And so the person was asking the coach, hey, um, I got a question on this. This Whatever. Let's just say real estate. Okay. And the coach would say... Um, have you listened to the course? Have you watched the all the courses? And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could tell this is like, yeah, 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 I watched it. 
yeah, 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 I, I listened to it. And he's like, no, did you really? Because you could do it while you're cooking, while you're watching a game at the mm-hmm, same time, mm-hmm. while you know you have to you pick up the phone and didn't pause it and right. then just continued. Right. So you really didn't get it. Yes. Right. So sometimes you have to watch the same thing two, three times. And look, people daydream mm-hmm. while they're in something, right? You could be in a movie and all of a sudden think about something else and miss something. Right. So my point is, is that we hope that if there's something that's said here, don't feel like, oh, I've kind of seen it. You can go back and watch it right. again. Isn't that I wonderful do. with technology? Yeah. Time. You can go back. So we have heard you. <laughs> uh, we've got the text messages mm-hmm. and the comments, which I appreciate. I really said, do. hey, don't forget, there's a reminder because <laughs> we alluded to, and I did forget, so thank you for the reminders. Okay. I did forget that we alluded to on one episode, I don't even remember what episode, that we would talk about success is inconvenient. Oh, wow. Okay. Success is inconvenient. Okay. And so we got some reminders. And so I said, we will definitely do a whole episode. And it, quite honestly, it should only take us about 15 minutes to do it. That's my plan. You know, 15 <laughs> minutes to to do success is inconvenient because I believe this has everything to do with self-talk hmm. and okay. self-love and how you care for yourself and treat yourself. You remember we did an episode on why it's hard for some people to trust because they don't trust themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so they expect that other people are going to do them wrong because they do themselves wrong. Right. Right. And so they, you know, hey, I'm going to wake up early and don't. I'm going to read. Don't. I'm going to exercise. Don't. Right. So they don't, don't do these things. So now they haven't made a they made a commitment to themselves, but didn't stick to the commitment. So that's not good self-love. So do you think that part of success maybe being inconvenient is because you haven't really committed to it? That's exactly right. So you feel like when you're going out of your way, it's really inconvenient because it's not really in you to do. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So that no, this is good. So inconvenient. Let's talk about that. And I think if we break this down, everyone be able to do some self discovery here. At least okay. look at yourself and say, "Man, that's so true. I've been in that place." Okay. Or hey, I can see that I already overcome that. So I'm at, I'm in a place now where I'm willing to be inconvenienced for what I want most. Mm-hmm. But you would have to decide that as we talk about this, right? Okay. So inconvenience is when you feel um, troubled by something. There's some discomfort, meaning that you went out of your way. So it's not as comfortable Mm -hmm. because it was not in the agenda. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, being able to catch two trains, having to uh, have a layover, having to go past my house to pick up this person. I didn't plan on that. So it's Mm -hmm. inconvenient. So you feel troubled. Right. Can I just say something on that, too? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's just a little. Why are you asking me for permission? It's just a little pause. OK. Because I don't want you to lose your train of thought. I got it. But something that I have learned mm-hmm. that I used to do and now I don't anymore. And now it's something that really you don't at all. or You don't do it as much. Well, I'll say I don't do it as much because okay. maybe someone will say you do. You do that. You do do it. <laughs> you just you did do that. Do. <laughs> I, I, I pray that I don't do it as often. Okay. But when you speak about inconvenience, something that I know I used to do and now I try not to do anymore. When you ask somebody to do something and they tell you that it's inconvenient. Mm. I don't like that. And I know I used to do it. So if you say, hey, can you... Right. Um, pick me up and take me to the airport at five. Instead of saying, yes, I can, or no, I can't. <laughs> I say, well, I mean, I can, but that means I have to take off work yes. early and then I have to get a babysitter because, you know, little, little Tom, <laughs> I have to get him and, oh, well, okay, well, I just, well, they will just, won't go to practice and I guess I won't cook dinner. I'll just get something. <laughs> to go. But yeah, sure, I can do it. And I, yeah, and mm. I don't, and I've realized that's not nice. Yeah, It's not, and it doesn't make, the person feel good. This is so and good. And sometimes the person doesn't even ask you. Yeah. Is can is it you just say it. Right. Because you just want them to know I'm right. really going out of my way for you. Yes. But that's not really nice. Right. So I just thought that I would say that sometimes when things are inconvenient, you don't always have to verbalize them. You don't at all, actually. Right? Yeah. You should, I, I just thought I would say that. Yeah. And that's a good that was good. I mean, I'm, and I I'm being honest. You, I'm not. And I have watched you grown past. I'm not past saying that. I have not. I haven't done it before. I get it. Right. Some. Huh? Yeah. yeah. You watch it. Well, see, we all watch you do that. Yeah. That's huge. No, seriously. 
Thank you for your vulnerability. Sure. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about, you know, letting that out? I mean, because you helped a lot of people there. Because I guarantee <laughs> there are people who do that and like, oh, shoot, I do that. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, especially if I mean, you... I can make a list of right now of people I know that do that right now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm like, I don't even know if they know they're doing it. But after watching this, and I'm going to send them this link. Hey, I don't know if you checked out this episode. <laughs> so if but, you get a link from me. But it also <laughs> goes with what um, you always talk about. Mm-hmm. Yes or no is a complete sentence, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I'm in learning that, it made me realize I had to adjust other things, yeah. not just saying yes or no, yeah. right? So sometimes when you when you say no, you feel like you have to explain it. This right. is why yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But it works a it works the same exact way when you say yes. Yeah. When you say yes, yes is also a complete sentence, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not yes, but and I have to. Justification. Yeah. The only reason you would need to do that is if you couldn't do it at the exact time. Let's say that someone says, hey, "I'm landing at nine thirty. You can say, "I can't do nine thirty. Can do 10. Um, mm-hmm. Because I have an appointment and I probably oh, yeah, won't sure. be out. You know sure. what I mean? But I'll be happy. Like, please know if you if you don't mind waiting for 30 minutes, I will be there. Count right. on me. That's totally That's different, different. Right? Because it sounds like I want to be there and I'm willing to come. I just have to be there 30 minutes late instead of, hey... And guess what? Ooh, that ah. is a that's that is a way of letting someone know you're being inconvenienced and you don't mind. Yeah. That is actually a nice way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It makes the person feel going out of your way, it makes the person okay. feel even better. Like, man, they're going out of their way for me. And they yeah. they really don't they're like making it they really it's a way to do it. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. And, and look, we, because we're talking about inconvenience and we're gonna tie it into how success is inconvenient. So you're absolutely right. I can't tell you how many folks. I didn't think about I it. I didn't that mean way. to throw you off your. That, no, that was <laughs> just perfect. Made me think of it. No, that was perfect because you're right. There's so many folks who have to talk about how troubling it will be if they do it. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you about how success is inconvenient, and I don't know this to be true. So let me preface by saying that. Okay. But for me. It has always been how I define inconvenience that has made me feel like it actually wasn't inconvenient at all. Mm. Okay. So if inconvenience is like some trouble, something that's uncomfortable, something that's out of the way, um, something that wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. So for me, whenever I was, whenever I planned out a goal, okay. a dream, and I put the strategy in place. So I'm going to have to bring more people to learn from this particular coach, right? To a seminar, let's say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is what I did. I got a whole bunch of team in front of information where they became better, better at marketing, better at branding, better at selling, right? But it was my job to get them in front of those coaches mm-hmm. because I had to use my influence. They weren't going just based on me saying go. Mm-hmm. So I learned that, hey, look, if you can create culture at the same time, like pick them up, ride together for hours to New Jersey, from Maryland, and in those three hours, you guys will get to know each other better. Plus, now you're getting to the event together. You're learning together, growing together. On the way back, you're talking about what you learned because different people learn different things at the same seminar. So I would have to go past my house to go pick up the person, the teammate, mm-hmm. to go back past my house to go to New Jersey. So I went south first, wow. away from New Jersey, right. to pick them up, to go back past my house, to go to New Jersey. Which was inconvenient. That was inconvenient. But I never said, hey, I'm going to have to actually go the opposite way to get you. I probably would have told them. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't look at that as inconvenient. I looked at it as an opportunity for me to reach my goal. So watch yeah. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I defined it as a part of my plan. Yes. So remember I said things that are unplanned, uncomfortable, things that are troubling. That wasn't trouble for me. It wasn't against my, my plan was to get them there. Whatever it took to get them there. Mm-hmm. Lead, get up at five in the morning instead of six. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a part of my plan. Yeah. To go south before I go north. That's a part of my plan. So for me, what most people would define as inconvenient, I looked at as a part of my plan. Right. A part of my plan is it's not going to happen right away. It's going to take me a little bit longer. It's going to cost me a little bit more because that's more gas. Right. 
Right. So so for the average person, they're like, man, I got to get up early. I'm tired. Uh, that's going to be gas money. Uh, I'm going the opposite way. These, I just named three things that could be. Inc- you see, my voice changes when I do that. Right. <laughs> but for me, man, this is a part of the plan. Right. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing that, that we have to be careful of when we talk about inconvenience, especially success is inconvenient. There have been times where I left my house to go pick up somebody to go back past my house to go to the event to go back past my house. To go drop them off. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that could be doubly inconvenient. Mm-hmm. There were times that we made the plan. We said, this is the plan. I'm going to pick you up this time. This, we, the plan is in place. I go out of my way and the person is not there. Or the person doesn't answer the phone or doesn't yeah. answer the door. And I'm yeah, like, dude, they, oh, I overslept. And so now you start to feel like I went out of my way though. Right. You know what I mean? I went out of my way. Because I wanted it for you. You said we were good. We were going to do this together. Yeah. Now I went out of my way. So then you have to be careful. Here's, what, here's my point. If we're not careful, we'll feel like the future inconvenience is now weighty, is now not worth it, because we're basing it on what someone else did to you in the past. But you always talk about, too, you have to have a short memory. That's exactly right. You have to. Yep. Whether you play sports, whether yeah. right, because you're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And if you let that weigh on you for the next play, the next game, you will operate as if you are going to make the same mistake instead of, I le- what did I learn from that mistake? Right. Right. So call in the morning before I leave instead of just the night before. Mm-hmm. Hey, on my way, you good? Right. You don't answer. I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> right. So my point is, so it could be looked at as inconvenient if You've had, un- unfortunately, a pitfall there in the past. Sure. But here's why I said that success being inconvenient is really a form of self-love and self-care. Remember what I said in the beginning? Yeah. Because really, this is a commitment you're making to yourself. If you're disciplined, mm-hmm. right? Discipline saying that I'm committed to something. Discipline meaning that I am willing to give up something I want so badly now for something I want most in the future. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I want to go play now. Yes, I want to travel now. Yes, I want to eat the restaurants now. Yes, I want to go to the party now. But I'm willing to give up now for what I want most. That's discipline. And discipline is a form of self-love. Because what I'm saying is I love myself enough that I'm willing to give up this short term, this fleeting satisfaction for something I want so much. I want my family to be financially independent. I I don't want to worry about money again. I don't want my family to have to deal with some of the stuff that money causes as an issue. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I'm willing to give all this up now and yes I know it's going to be fun and yes I know people are going to talk about it yes I know they're going to show it on social media and yes I am going to feel like I I, I feel missing out like man I would have been I wanted to be there yes but what I want most I'm so disciplined with it I love myself enough that I'm willing to give this up right now yeah that's good that's self-care that's self-love the promise we make to our future self Mm -hmm. I listen our future self is counting on the current self to keep up with the promise our past self made this is key Like, I don't know how my future self would be today if my current self continued to do what I want now over what I want most. You'll never get there. Um, Right. My future self would be like, dude, why did you? Because the things we think are so important now, as we get older, we start to look back and say they weren't as important. If we could have 10x this now, it wasn't even that important. Mm -hmm. But you have to be more mature and hopefully you grow because if you don't grow and our self-talk doesn't change, the, even though we're older, we still have a young mind, mm-hmm. a young mindset. So what happens, the older us, this grown man is, has a little boy mind. This grown woman has a little girl mind. And what happens is, unfortunately, this person still blames the world, still blames the situation, still blames how they were raised, still blames because they cannot, they cannot make a commitment to themselves to grow, thereby they're never taking responsibility for the, the shift that can happen in their lives. And I know, look, I'm not being, I'm not discrediting different people who go through different things in life. Man, yeah. that's got to be tough. When I hear about certain things people have grown through and I've never had to deal with myself. And this is why the self-talk is a self-talk. It's not you talking to other people because how do we judge somebody? You can't. 
right? To say, I would have never done that. Well, I I don't know what it's like to look at my mom and she's hungry and she's starving and we don't have food. So who am I to say I would have never done that? Maybe I would have if I looked at my mom and I'm like, whatever it takes, mom, I'm getting us food in this house. Right. So I'm not judging at all. I'm just saying at some point we got to make a decision to make a commitment to ourselves to be disciplined enough to give up something short term to have something long term. And that's what I mean by success is inconvenient. It may be inconvenient for now. Yeah, but that's a perfect spin on self care too. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I really want people to love themselves enough, and and if we don't, we have to work there. We have to start healing mm-hmm. and working on ourselves and loving ourselves and caring about ourselves enough that we can say what you said, which is that solid no for right now. Right. Or when other people laugh because there were people who were like, dude, you keep doing the same thing, which is caring about people and they keep disappointing you. But a part of my plan was to empower people. And the only way that you will never be disappointed is if you have no expectation. That's right. And if you have expectation of people, you do want to see people do better. There are going to be some people who unfortunately disappoint you, who say they're ready. And they're just not ready yet. Yeah. Maybe and that's they, for anything. Yeah, right? Relationship. Yeah, they're just not ready. Yeah. And maybe they'll never get ready. And it's not, not up to you to make them ready. It's up to you once they're ready, if that's what you're doing, if you're coaching, counseling, you know, therapy. To be there. It's up to you to be there. Yeah. But they have to be ready too. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, guys, yes, it could be inconvenient, but I would ask you to redefine how you look at inconvenient. Mm-hmm. I would ask that you love yourself enough and care for yourself enough that you become disciplined and committed to you your goals, your decisions. That means anything else that happens, it's a part of the plan. Yeah. It's part of the plan. You wanted it anyway. <laughs> you, you wanted it most. So what didn't happen now doesn't really matter. Okay? That's good, babe. Yeah. So That's guys, good. remember, these are all the things we're saying to ourselves. This yeah. is good as part of the plan. This happened for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it, I'm learning. Even when it's not easy to say it. Exactly right. Sometimes it's not as easy to say it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Yep. It's completely okay. Yeah. So, guys, this is a self-talk. Listen, we are going into 2024 saying better things to ourselves. That's right. Maybe not the best things yet, but at least better. Right? And that's the key. It's that progression. Just 1% better. And under the compounded effect, man, I can be an amazing you by the end of 2024. But start today. Don't start tomorrow. Start today. Right? Read something. Listen to something. Where you are because you're watching this. Already on point. This is an episode of the self-talk experience. So the things we say to ourselves about ourselves, remember, will, not possibly can, but will determine what you attract for yourselves. And (laughs) if I'm inconvenienced, I'll try not to tell you. (laughs) Take care, guys. Thank you for listening to the Self Talk Podcast with Darnell and Tracy Self. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform. And we'll see you next time. And remember, talk good to yourself. Talk good to yourself.